my name is Vika and I come from Scotland, but obviously I'm originally from Japan. Um, today I'd like to talk about uh, uh, what's happening in Japan. So it's been seven years since the accident and um, as uh, you probably are aware, there are still a lot of people being mis uh, displaced and also uh, cleaning up is quite costly. Uh, they say they're projecting 21.5 trillion yen, but it is prospected to uh, increase more. That's okay, it's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this, uh, I think, you know, there is also this pro a problem with the increasing number of uh, uh, tanks containing the contaminated water. Now they're talking by diluting them and releasing them into the ocean with some tritium in it. And also uh, there's accumulation of a lot of uh, 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 waste, uh, like contaminated art and leaves and other things, uh, uh, debris from the Fukushima area. And they did, did create an intermediate waste disposal area, but it's, it's considered that it, that is not enough at all. So they don't know what to do with this waste. Yeah. So, but the uh, Japanese government uh, obviously uh, announced in 2013, uh, Prime Minister Abe said that uh, everything is under control and there's no problem, um, no, there, will, there will never be a problem coming from radiation in, in, in Japan. And they want to follow the agenda. And in order to do that, uh, they have increased uh, the, uh, the they, they have tempered with the regulations. So they have, they, they have inc increased uh, the uh, limitation of dosage to 20 millisieverts, and also uh, for food and for um, uh, waste, uh, lower level waste, they, they've changed the regulations, they've, they've tempered us. And, and they say, and, and in order to do that, they are, the, the Fukushima is still under the declaration of nuclear emergency situation. And they haven't, and they haven't really stopped with that, and they're saying everything is under, under control, which is quite questionable. And, uh, and so, for instance, uh, so there is much of, um, uh, promotion going on in order to assure people that uh, things are okay and uh, Japan has survived the nuclear disaster. And one of it is uh, called Eat and Support Campaign. And like uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe is like eating Fukushima food. But uh, recently I also discovered Boris Johnson was uh, uh, drinking Fukushima peach juice. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, the fact that he's got red face, is this the radioactivity? <laughs> that is, I think, you know, <laughs> probably, probably. Sorry. Know, you know, but that's, uh, that's, that's how they're trying to, like, it's, it's not only inside Japan, they're also trying to start exporting all the Japanese food or Fukushima related food into places. And there has been a bit of problem in, I think, in Thailand last week. They, they banned some uh, Japanese fish being imported, but okay. So that's what they're trying to do. And on the other hand, they're still try, trying to cling on to the nuclear power. And this map actually shows the current status of uh, Japanese reactors. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, but uh, the blue ones, there are five of them, they have already restarted uh, uh, these power plants. And the grey ones are going to be decommissioned. You see that all Fukushima things are going to be uh, 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 decommissioned. And the pink ones, they got approval to restart. And the uh, yellow ones, they are now going to under the uh, assessment. So what they want to do is they want to uh, restart as many reactors as possible. And the Japanese Ministry of Economic and Trade and Industry, they um, proposed their ideal uh, energy mix by 2030 with half renewable, half nuclear. So they 
but there is, a, of course, you know, position saying that 44% uh, of uh, uh, carbon-free uh, energy source, I mean, can can be achieved with uh, um, uh, just with renewables. So uh, there there are some arguments, but that's what the, what the Japanese government is to do. And uh, so this is a bit about the background of Japan, but uh, Jap Japanese government is under strong influence of uh, two federations. One is called Keidanlen, another is called Denjiren. And Keidanlen is composed, uh, comprised of the, the, the represented companies. And you see, oh sorry, it's still in Japanese because I didn't know uh, how to pronounce some of the names. But, uh, um, so the people from Toshiba, uh, Nissan, uh, Toyota, Canon, the presidents and chairman of these companies become the chairpersons of uh, KWM. And what's very worrying is from May 2018, they have assigned guy, uh, chairman from Hitachi, and he is uh, his guy who is known to have transformed Hitachi into more social infrastructure business centered on electric power and the railroad, se railroad sector, which they both implement here in the UK, in fact. But, so, um, so this guy is obviously very, uh, well, he has, um, he has also made a speech and said that um, he considers nuclear as a very important part of Japanese, or um, well, Hitachi's uh, uh, strategy. And then Jiren is the um, electric power companies uh, 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 from over the, over the Japan. Uh, this federation uh, is led now currently led by the, the uh, uh, president of chief electric power company. And this guy um, actually is uh, also a director of uh, atomic power company in Japan. So, and, uh, and uh, former Prime Minister Naoto Kan, I, I suppose you may have met him, some of you, but well, he says that uh, virtually Denjire is deciding all the uh, uh, Japanese energy policy instead of the government. So this is an example uh, of an article uh, which I saw in uh, Sahih Shimbun the other day. Uh, so, uh, so these um, power companies, they have an uh, um, average usage rate of uh, electric power transmit lines, and this usage rate uh, is 94, uh, aver the average of this usage rate is 19.4%. .4 so they have enough uh, available for all the usages. But the Japanese government has been giving uh, the, the reason that there's no, no uh, place for the renewables because there is no capacity. And so the guy from the, this uh, Denjiren was confronted at the, the, the uh, conference in November and he said that they are giving priority on nuclear because they consider it as a, as a base project. Um, oh, but uh, actually there's opposition going on. They're trying to file a bill, but we have to see how it goes. Um, I also want to note that uh, Japan is the most indebted country in the world. And uh, the red one is Japan, the one next to it is Greece, and the blue one is UK. So, um, but the, the trick is that ja most of Japanese um, um, debt is internal debt. So the chance of defaulting is much lower, and that's why uh, not too many people realize that Japan is in a risky <coughs> situation. But uh, what's getting very worrying is, right now, uh, the company is going under the uh, very aggressive monetary easing program called Abenomics, uh, which is to print more money to stimulate inf inflation. But once they stop, we, we can expect a severe outcome. I mean, so in order to avoid bankruptcy, they are kind of desperate. Uh, they have to um, sell the bonds to other countries, or they have to uh, secure the business, which is which is. Uh,
which is going to provide the highest in income taxes. And that's uh, that, and the nuclear and military uh, business falls perfectly into that. Yeah. yeah. So they've been trying to sell some nuclear uh, uh, reactors um, to Vietnam countries like Vietnam, Turkey, and India, but they failed. Uh, well, not completely, but they failed, yeah. So Vietnam put out, Turkey and India is leaning towards Russia, who is thought about much more, uh, becoming very aggressive in the market, which is also quite worrying. And uh, in addition to that, the, the one of the, the biggest spender, Toshiba, uh, um, uh, collapsed last, last year, last year, two years ago, uh, together with Westinghouse, and they, now, now Toshiba is uh, getting out of the, the nuclear vendor, I mean, nuclear reactor business. So uh, for uh, the Japanese uh, nuclear, uh, for, the, for the nuclear new build, Vilfa uh, 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 with Hitachi is the uh, only hope for Japan now. And I think Professor Thomas is going to talk about it. And then, um, um, and in, in addition, there has been a series of uh, corporate scandals in Japan about uh, uh, quality control of the Japanese products because they've been falsifying and forging data to increase quality controls. So now the myth of Japanese uh, like, you know, quality, the product <coughs> quality is also there. And on the other hand, this is really sad that Japanese government officially said that they're going to support. They, are, they highly appreciate the Trump's uh, uh, new nuclear policy, which uh, denies the, the prohibition of nuclear weapons. And uh, Japan, as you know, is the only country who has been a dead victim of the atomic bombing, but this is totally, uh, I'm, 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 I don't know, I am, according to me, it's really disgraceful. And uh, yeah, so um, the, the Japanese government that happily announced that uh, uh, the, the relationship of, uh, uh, between America and Japan is now stronger than, stronger than ever thanks to the uh, trusting relationship between Abe and Trump. And for instance, this is a uh, funny example again. But, uh, so when uh, Ivanka Trump, the Trump, Trump's daughter, went over to Japan, uh, Abe invited her over to dinner and donated $15 million to her fund, which is to support women or something. But uh, when the ICANN executive went to Japan and requested for a meeting officially, Abu said he doesn't have any time to meet her. So it's kind of explains, you know, what's going on. Yeah. <coughs> but you know, no matter what they want to do, the, the thing is, it's a country of 110 active volcanoes. The wet ones are more higher active, but they they got plenty, and they this the the, the chart on the right shows the reactors, the, the nuclear reactors. So uh, I don't see why uh, we don't just turn them off and you know take the fuel out and everything. But, so that's the that's that's what the plan is. So this is just a, so. Um, the whole situation just reminds me of this um, uh, world kamikaze, uh, which was the, the, the suicide mission um, um, placed onto the young people, uh, young boys actually after, uh, at the end of World War II. And they were trying to bring the miracle. They, were, they said that they, these people can bring miracle, but uh, relying on nuclear power, what kind of miracle may be, but you know, it's not, it's not going to just uh, blow away the problem, but the whole, you know, it's going to blow away everyone. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions, quickly? Is it really TEPCO who pays this cost no, of the loss? Uh, or effectively... Or, or in fact, is effectively the cost of that socialized to the people of Japan, either through taxes or higher power prices for the next three or four decades. So well, who actually pays for the loss in reality? 
I don't think any kind of this one was I cannot say for sure, but I remember last year they said they increased the electricity bill for 10 pounds per head a year. So that could have been, I mean, for the, for the support of Fukushima, so that could have been part of it. And they are always tempering with all these uh, uh, taxes and things. So to be honest, I don't know which money is going on. There has been a lot of financial scandals also recently. So, so, so mm -hmm. you that when something went wrong in Japan, mm -hmm. that the people are actually paying the cost. Oh, yeah. Right, so that's similar to Canada, mm -hmm. in which uh, the uh, Canada's Nuclear Liability Act, 1976, said that the maximum liability in Canada for a nuclear power plant generator was only 75 million Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. There's a power plant in Pickering, and they're Pickering in the east of, part of Toronto, which I visited. The average price of a house in Scarborough is at least a million dollars, so the maximum liability until 2015 for that operator was only 75 houses. It was increased to one billion recently, but that's still a fraction. That one billion liability for the operators in Canada is a fraction of the loss that TEPCO is actually encountering, and probably a fraction of the cleanup cost of Chernobyl as well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, and, and to be honest, uh, I, I've been studying decommissioning for a while. Uh, this decommissioning business is still on the extended payment basis, and nobody knows how much it's going to cost. I mean, uh, maybe for EG or for like simple plants, maybe you can guess, but things like this, you, can, you, can, uh, you, you never know. Um, to be honest, a lot of people doubt that they can ever decommission Fukushima, which I also share the view. But now Japanese government is saying they will clean it up in four decades and for this uh, uh, 180, for 200 million. What's the military angle here? Okay, nobody's mentioned North Korea yet. Um, is there a kind of recess deterrence thing going on and, and how has that come out in your work? Well, I think um, well, Japanese government, uh, as as they said, you know, they have they have shaky economic ground and they they have shaky uh, problems, and they they are actually uh, a movement to stress that you know we are under heavy threat from North Korea, and you know they they want to go into war, yeah. But um, I think I think U.S. is probably not to. Not want to. You said they want to go to war. Yeah, Japan wants to go to war. I, that's the feeling I get. The government. The government. government. Yeah, Japan, yeah. Japanese government, not not the general public. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese government. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Shall we? Come on.